I spent a lot of years with Kesey, and uh, so I'm interviewed a lot of times, and just about everybody always asked him, what was your greatest work? And invariably, he would say, oh, the bus, the bus, above all, the bus. He said, oh, not uh, one flew over the cuckoo's nest, not sometimes a great notion. He says, no, he says, that's just writing. He says, my greatest work was the bus. But hardly anybody really knows how that came to be that we had that bus. And so I'm just going to briefly tell you that. It started in November of 1963. Uh, a lot of us were in New York. They were doing a Broadway show of Cuckoo's Nest, and we were there for the opening. Ken, his brother Chuck, and uh, their wives, Faye and Sue, and their grandma, Grandma Smith, was there. And uh, a lot of other people, uh, Dorothy Fadiman was there on that trip. Everybody had flown to New York except me. I drove, foolishly not realizing that you can't drive a car around New York, so I did it anyway. <laughs> and uh, Kesey being a great adventurer that, we, that he was, we spent a lot of time just driving around, seeing stuff, uh, going to museums. Uh, it didn't hurt that I had a big mustard squeeze bottle almost that big full of peyote that we'd boiled down the summer before. <laughs> so so we, we managed to keep things pretty interesting. Uh, among the things that we saw as we were driving around was the scene where the World's Fair was being built that was set to open in the summer of 1964, the following year. And we all decided, oh, World's Fair, that would be great fun. Uh, Kesey had often talked about the great time that he and Mike Hagan and Babs and several others had all had at the Seattle World's Fair a couple of years earlier. Uh, they didn't have peyote that time. They had a lot of LSD, and I'm sure that helped. That's, this is all back when all that stuff was legal, you understand. <laughs> we, weren't, we weren't doing anything wrong. <laughs> we never do that. So we decided, well, we're going to want to have to go to this fair. And uh, that kind of just got into the back of our minds. And after several days in New York, a week or so, Time to go back home, and Ken decided he wasn't going to fly back. He was going to drive back with me. And Sandy Lehmanhaupt, who passed away just a week or so before Ken, uh, also came with us. And we headed out driving across the country in my old Chevy station wagon. And, uh, gee, we were about as far as Pennsylvania. When we started hearing, the president's been shot. Kennedy's been shot. And it galvanized our consciousness. Uh, about this trip, and everybody's consciousness was on this same trip. And we realized that there was something about traveling across the country with everybody's mind in a certain place that had a, a kind of power and a kind of magic to it. And we got to thinking more about this trip that we would make the next summer. Started adding up all the people that we were going to want to go, and there was too many of us. We couldn't all get into even my big old station wagon, and Babs had a Volkswagen, one of those funny kind of covered wagon looking pickup trucks that seat six people if they're tiny and thinking about, God, we don't have, how are we going to do this? And we just kind of let it go and thought about it. And then that following spring, Ken and I took a trip. We were all living in the Bay Area. We took a trip up to Eugene where my family lived and where his family lived. And there was an interesting thing happened in Eugene at that time. The city had gone out of the business of running buses. Uh, they were losing money at it, and they gave up. But it didn't die. Some private party decided, the city doesn't want to run buses, we'll run buses. And they bought up a whole bunch of these little miniature school buses that had about four or five windows on a side and painted them green. They call that place the Emerald Empire. And... Uh, these little buses were running all over town. And Ken and I looked at that, and we had this thought. Says, hey, we could all get into one of those. And so Ken said, find a bus. I'll buy it. And so the search began. And it didn't take long. I was looking for a little bus, so we didn't find a little one. We found a great big one. Somebody advertised a bus for sale, and they had already made it into a kind of a motor home. It had bunks and... Uh, a kitchen of sorts, a refrigerator and a stove and everything. It was a Catholic. It had outgrown it. It only good for about 14 people. <laughs> 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 uh, 
He wanted 1,500 bucks, so Kesey bought that thing for 1,500 bucks. I see somebody telling me I got 30 seconds to go, so if you want to know what happened next, look up our website, <laughs> intrepidtrips.com, and you'll find that the movie we shot of that bus trip is now available on videotape, and you can get it. So look up our website, intrepidtrips.com, and find out what happened next. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.